Hey everybody, Space Wizard here. You know, over at Hearthhead, we still get a lot of people asking what cards they should be crafting from Whispers of the Old Gods. So this week I went down the list of legendary minions from Whispers of the Old Gods and decided which of them were worth crafting, which of them might be worth crafting, and which of them you absolutely shouldn't be crafting. Since you're probably here for the minions you should be spending your dust on, I'm going to start with those. These are all used in top tier decks or are powerful enough that they'll definitely be seeing play in the future. C'Thun is probably the most important minion that you can craft right now. There are three different top tier decks that run him, so you really don't have an excuse to not craft him first. A lot of his support cards like Beckoner of Evil and C'Thun's Chosen are common too, so saving up for the big boss man and building a C'Thun deck is insanely cheap in comparison to a lot of other decks, and a really good place to start if you're just now getting into the game. After C'Thun, you're really going to want to craft Twin Emperor Vecklore, since he's without a doubt the second most important card in C'Thun decks. In certain matchups, he'll actually be even more important than C'Thun himself, so once you've got your C'Thun and all of his common support minions crafted, start saving up for this guy. The rest of the legendaries you should be crafting all belong to different kinds of decks, and you can pretty much craft them in whatever order you want. Fandral Staghelm sees a fair amount of play in Druid decks, but he isn't really the centerpiece of any of those decks either, so maybe think about crafting this guy later down the line once you've got lots of dust to spend. Malkarok is a vital piece in Tempo Warrior decks, as he gives them a minion to play on curve for 7 mana. He usually isn't as high impact as some of the other legendaries in the deck, but there are a few weapons like Doomhammer and Gorehowl that can absolutely blow out your opponent if you get lucky. Nazoth the Corrupter doesn't see quite as much play as he did at the start of the expansion, but Nazoth Paladin and Nazoth Warlock are still extremely strong top tier decks that absolutely need this card in them to work. So if you're a fan of control, you should probably craft this old god first. Ragnaros Lightlord also sees play in Nazoth Paladin, but you can also play him in vanilla Control Paladin decks as well. So if Paladin is your favorite class and you want to play it on the ranked ladder, this should be an easy pick for you. Zeril Poisoned Mind is arguably the weakest legendary on this list, but it still manages to see some play in Miracle Rogue lists. However, it certainly isn't required in that deck either, so unless literally all you want to play is Rogue, then you should probably craft something else first. The last legendary you absolutely need to craft is Yogg Saron Hope's End. Initially thought to be a card that was just meant to be played in fun decks, Yogg has since been used in multiple top tier spell oriented tempo decks. These kinds of decks are often very difficult to use properly, so if you're new to the game, maybe think about holding off on crafting Yogg for a while. But if using this guy seems like a good time to you, then by all means craft away. Next, I'm going to go over the cards you definitely don't want to craft, at least for now. These are all either straight up bad cards or just don't have any place in the current meta or the foreseeable future. Anomalous is this weird board clear minion hybrid that just doesn't do what it's supposed to do fast enough and doesn't represent enough of a threat to your opponent to justify its cost. Deathwing Dragonlord, while certainly potentially powerful, doesn't mesh well with the playstyle of modern dragon decks. By the time you get to turn 10, you should have already played all your other dragons, which makes his death rattle subpar the vast majority of the time. Hogger Doom of Elwyn is just kind of bad. He's too slow to be a top tier 7 drop. Mukla Tyrant of the Veil vale is intended to be used in spell-oriented tempo decks, of which there are currently two very strong ones in the meta. He just isn't good enough to see play in either of those decks right now, so it's incredibly unlikely that he'll ever be playable. Nat the Darkfisher is meant to be used in mill decks, but there aren't any working mill decks in the meta right now, and it's unlikely that there will be very soon since it doesn't seem to be an archetype that Blizzard wants to support. Princess Huhuran is a legendary that a lot of people thought was actually going to be pretty good, but even with tons of support, the Death Rattle Hunter Jack just isn't good enough to compete against other top tier decks, so it's unlikely that Huhuran is ever going to see play. Shifter Zeris is clearly just meant to be a fun little card that you can play around with, so you really shouldn't craft him before anything important unless you really only plan on playing casually. And lastly, the Boogie Monster is by far the worst 8 drop in the game, and the only circumstance in which you should craft him is if you're looking to complete your collection. The rest of the legendaries you should maybe craft because they have potential to see play depending on what kind of cards get released in the next few sets. So once you've crafted all the other cards that you want, consider crafting these guys. Chogol's strength is entirely dependent on what kind of spells the Warlock has at its disposal. The stronger its spells, the stronger Chogol will be. Halaziel the Ascended doesn't see play in any Shaman decks right now, but he's been tested in experimental control Shaman decks, which he performs exceptionally well in. So if you're a forward-thinking kind of player and you really enjoy playing control Shaman, consider crafting Halaziel. 
Harold Volage has potential to pull off some cool combos with minions that have really strong abilities, but he's also very tempo oriented so he doesn't really fit into any priest deck right now. Sawgoth the Slitherer is actually pretty good in the current metagame, but there are just stronger cards that you can run instead of him right now. If something gets nerfed, or if late game control decks really start needing extra taunts, then he might start getting played. And finally, Yasharaj has shown that it performs exceptionally well in Astral Communion Druid decks, which aren't very strong right now, but have the potential to become very powerful depending on what kind of cards get released in the next few sets. That's it for this week's video guys, but don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. I'll be back next week with another new video, but until then you can check out hearthhead.com or either of its social media pages for all sorts of Hearthstone related content. See you next time everybody!